All right, I'm going to give it a couple of minutes. I'm going to try to connect to my Wi-Fi because it keeps interrupting. All right, I'll give it a minute or so. I had to disconnect my laptop, uh, being on the same network as my phone. The uh, video kept interrupting, so I can't see other than on my phone if anybody says anything. Not sure how the quality of the picture is coming through. My first time doing a live video from this CNC page, so please be patient. I'll act like everything's going okay unless someone says otherwise. So, I don't see any comments. explain how I torch and spit these pine rounds and I've had several requests to do these videos and finally decided today to do a live one. So this one in particular is 24 inch round. I get them up Home Depot. They're uh, very inexpensive. And the one I'll be working on today is an 18 inch. Uh, mainly, I've got to do an 18 inch anyway, and it's smaller and it'll take less time to go through the process. So, this is one that has already been uh, prepped and sealed, and I, I keep these in stock in different colors so that when someone wants something cut in, with the CNC, then I just throw it up on the machine after I program it, and I don't have to spend the prepping time to get them ready. So I've got a red one here, there's a blue one back behind me, and I'll show you at the end the difference between the one that I'm going to do now that is going to dry and turn a chalky color. And then this is one that's been sealed and then I have a finished one that has been top coated and hopefully it'll show up in the video the difference between the chalky, the kind of flat, and then the finished uh, glossy. So first I have plenty of unicorn spit. I mainly use Molly Red Pepper but I use a lot of Blue Thunder as well. So, I use mine straight, I don't use water, and for me, it comes out more bold and is not diluted where uh, 
I mean, you can still see the grain through it, but it's not as watered down and not as bold. Okay, so I'm going to aim the camera down for the bench, and that way you don't have to see me. You can see the piece I'm working on. So when I first get it out, I check both sides and look to see sometimes there's dents and scratches. So I pick a good side based on knots. Um, this one has a couple dents on this side, and I also like more knots and grain. And then I want to look at, uh, for these fire department ones specifically, how the grain goes. Uh, so I want my design to kind of follow the grain where it looks like fire. And I'll show you a finished one when I'm done. So I don't see any comments, not sure how to turn them on. So hopefully everything is going good, looks good. Uh, so I will keep going. Uh, I prepped this with just an electric sander with 150 grit. And they're kind of wavy when you first get them. So I go across the grain uh, to kind of level it off and then slowly with the grain. And then I smooth out the edges and barely round it over. It's a uh, one inch thick. It already has a, uh, a small route on it, so it's not a uh, 90 degree angle around this edge. And after it's all prepped with sanding, I'm ready to torch. So there's two kinds of torches that I have. Uh, this is a smaller one. I mainly use this to get bubbles out of epoxy. You can use this. It's just a smaller torch and will take you a lot longer. Uh, this is propane. I also use map gas in a yellow container. It burns a little bit hotter. Uh, but propane or map gas will work. So all I do is fire this up and I turn it down to where it's barely coming out. It doesn't need to blast onto the wood. And get rid of the sawdust. And down here I just have uh, a roll of 24 inch foam that I use to ship things in. And instead of rolling this around with color on the, my workbench, I use uh, this foam, kind of protects the edge. So I start halfway up, so I'm not down here by the foam or near the workbench. Uh, so I do it half at a time, and then I'll flip it around and do the other half. And I also do the edge and just go around. And you can see that it doesn't take much and this just starts turning and however it comes out it's the nice thing about pine it has great grain for torching and the wood's not really hot so it's not melting the styrofoam or foam that I'm using as a pad and if you allow the heat to work upward the torch kind of just flows around and really the wood just picks what's going to be torched. Hopefully you can see that. Alright, so there's the edge. Now I'll have the grain running straight up and down. Uh, instead of sideways. If you leave it straight up and down, the heat rises, and if you start in the middle and work up, it will uh, start the grain raising before you get there. 
and it'll be a little bit easier as you move side to side and I just move in little lines hoping you can see that so I'll try to hurry up and do this so it doesn't take a lot of time and we can move on to the unicorn spirit it doesn't have to be a deep burn I always think that it's going to be too dark of a burn for the unicorn spit to show up, but it doesn't. As you're putting the unicorn spit on with a foam brush, and you can either leave it like I'm going to do, or wipe off the excess. Uh, you wipe off a lot of this soot that's sitting on the surface. Thing is, you want to move your hand. All right, now I'll flip it around. Start the other way. The knots I go around, there's sap in them, and it will let off a liquid and then dry. Sometimes the unicorn spit won't cover that or color it, so I'll show you here in a minute if I run into that problem. Just take a piece of 150 sandpaper, fold it over, and I only sand that sappy spot, and if it's roughed up, the unicorn spit will grab a hold of it and color it. So I'm going to go around this knot because it will not torch. What I like about these pine rounds is that each one of them is different when you torch them. You never know what you're going to end up with. And if you look over it when you're done, if there's any light spots, you can barely kiss it with the flame. And like around this knot here, it didn't torch a lot around it. Okay. So I'm going to call that good on the torching. Now I'll look at the grain for the fire department logo that I do and see which way uh, looks best for flames rising or smoke. This one doesn't have a lot of uh, up and down grain so then I want to look at the knot placement for my logo. I know it's going to be mainly here in the middle um, so do I want this knot at the top or at the bottom where their name's going to be uh, this one I will probably put at the top. So, on to the unicorn spit. I use a two inch foam brush and I get these in a bargain bin at Ace Hardware or I've seen people buy them for a dollar a piece at Dollar Tree. Um, this is what I've seen a lot of people use on the unicorn spit uh, site. So, make sure the lid's closed. I don't know if Michelle, the owner of Unicorn Spit, is on the video or not. If she's in the, in the viewing or not, but hopefully I serve this purpose well. So I start with my edges first, and the end grain, um, 
soaks in a lot. So I put it on heavy and then just work my way around. And the way I apply this is I do not use the flat side of the brush to put it to put it on. I actually use the bladed side, and you'll see here in a minute, um, and just smear it in straight lines with the grain. Uh, on the edges, same thing. It, it's more sturdy and stiff to use the brush this way than this way because it flexes and bends going like that. This way, it stays more rigid. So again, I don't water it down. I put it on straight and I'll start with the end grain and I'm just going to squirt it on a little bit at a time and work my way around. So again, using the side, I'm hoping this shows up, I'm just going to cover everything. I don't worry about finishing the back of these when they're hung up. No one ever looks at the back. So in these end grain, there's uh, some pitting. And by using this bladed side, you can squish it down in there where it's all covered. Whatever I do get on the back, if I go over, uh, when I'm done, I sand all that and it comes right off. So I'm not worried about overlapping on the back or front. And I'm just gonna do this all the way around. Now on the sides, where you're going with the grain, it's very smooth, so you don't need a lot. But I start on one side and kind of push it and squish it down in the pitting. And then take the excess and bring it back. It goes on fairly easy on the sides. And before I get my hands in, I'm going to put a glove on. Uh, here, I don't know if you can see this right here, there's some pitting there. Um, but it squishes right down in there. So before I get around to the other side, I'm going to put a glove on. I've heard Michelle say before, in her videos to push and it's easier to get better coverage by pushing instead of dragging it and by using this bladed side it's easier to do that because it doesn't flex Okay, hopefully this isn't too boring. Almost done with the edge. But as you can see, by using this straight, it's very bold. And as it dries, it'll lighten up. But when you seal it, the color comes back very bold and I'll show you a finished one at the end the other thing I like about these sponges is it soaks it up so that later on if you come to a deep spot say this knot uh, you can push it down in there and it squishes right down in any voids. Okay, so those, that's all the edge. Now I'm going to turn it sideways. I'm right handed. So I'm going to go with the grain, use the bladed edge, and I'm just going to make a couple lines a little bit at a time. And let's see if I can get this in closer. Alright. See if I can stay out of the way. Oh, I'm going to take my bladed edge and just work it in and drag it out as much as I can. 
and the sponge is actually soaking in the excess. So when I get to where it's starting to die out down here, then I'll go back and do my edge. I'm really impressed by this stuff. I, it's a game changer for me. I finish for a living and I've never seen a stain like this that works so well on different uh, material. It works on glass and fabric. Yeah. I'm sure many of you are aware of what it can do in the Unicorn Spit website. All right, so there I'm, I'm to a point where I can't go any further and I'll just make another kind of heavy line because I'm in the wider part and I'll just start dragging it down. And it all mixes with itself. I just make sure there's no lines of stain on there. Now there's some excess up here and I'll just start bringing it down and taking that off and it's going in the foam brush. And here's a hole. I'll use my corner and instantly fill it. pushing it away from the edge so that I don't drag it up over the edge and have any excess there on the edge. Alright, we're over halfway done. So I'll use another kind of thick line, start bringing it down. I'll try to go a little faster. It may end up covering the whole thing. Now, I do have another style that I do, and I'll show you the finished one after this. And I use the on that one, I use the yellow, the orange, and red to make fire. And it's the same concept of what I'm doing right now, only after I torch it, when I start with those three colors, I only do them in thirds. So. For instance, if I take the yellow, I would only drag it a, a third of the way, and then I'll drag it out halfway up, just random, and then I'll go with the red on this side, do the same thing, a third of the way up, drag some of that in random, and then I'll take the orange and mix it in between the two, yellow and red, and it all blends together, and I'll show you how those come out, if you haven't seen them already. Okay, so that's already started drying, and I'm going to show you what I was talking about earlier. Right here, you'll see some little white spots and that sap spot there. There's another one there that's not taking the stain, but it's an easy fix. So I'll just take a piece of sandpaper and I'll fold it. And I barely use the corner and sand it. And then kind of rough this spot up here. Now when I go back over it, hopefully it disappears. There we go. gone. 
So that's the thing about pine. Occasionally you'll see a little white spot. Uh, that's a piece of lint or sawdust. There's another real tiny one. I doubt you can even see it, but I'm going to fix it. It's as easy as roughing it up and just barely touching it. It's gone. Okay, so that's the Molly Red Pepper one. Uh, torched and stained. And then what I would do after this dries 15, 20 minutes, it'll, it'll die down, be a little chalky, and then I will seal it. I use a vinyl sealer. It's a pre-catalyzed vinyl sealer. Um, it really brings the, back the color and it dries within 15 or 20 minutes. I can then seal sand that, put it on the CNC machine, cut whatever design I want. I will seal that again, uh, mainly to seal the cuts of the wood, and then I will seal sand it again, also what was cut, and then I will top coat it. So, I'll remove this. Okay, so after this one dries, it'll die down, then seal it. This one has been sealed, not seal sanded yet. Uh, I would seal sand it before I cut. And then after I cut, this is the difference. And this is completely finished. So the cut is smooth because it's been sealed, seal sanded, and then top coated. And the back, is the same. Went around with with a sander. Um, I keyhole most everything so that it's ready to hang for the customer level. And this is a self leveling. They just want to use one screw. So there's that one. And I also keep blue thunder ones. Same thing. Um, here's where I was talking about with the, the flames and smoke. I would put this being the top since this green is going upward. And that's sealed ready to cut. And then this is the other style that I do. Like I said, I come a third way with the yellow a third of the way up with red and then the orange in between and kind of mix it. Here I've drugged the red clear up through the orange into the yellow and it's to me I think it looks pretty good. Uh, I actually started this was the first one I did like this uh, so I started doing them different after that. I started making the yellow at the bottom then orange and then red you can kind of see uh, how all of this stuff blends together and is random. There's no set pattern or anything. So I even did it around the edge the same way. Uh, yellow, orange to red. And that's what I like about the unicorn spit is it blends well together. You can reactivate it with water after it's dried. Uh, my wife has actually been starting <laughs> to use it. I bought the whole set. I only use a certain amount of colors. Uh, so I've given her my box of 20 something other colors and she's been doing some projects that I will post uh, coming up. But I think she likes it. She's been using it with uh, acrylic as well. Uh, combination of the two and we've been doing some CNC stuff along with her signs that she's making so I'm hoping this helped uh, some of the people that were asking me to, to make this video on how to torch how to apply it uh, I'm sure there's other ways to do this stuff this is the best way for me and what I make out of them 
uh, I continue to watch videos on their website and uh, I'm sure there's all kinds of uses that if you follow them and and the other users as well uh, there are some very talented people that post some incredible work on the unicorn spit Facebook page especially so I think that's about it I don't see any comments I'm hoping this video went well and if not hopefully you'll let me know in a constructive constru uh, constructive criticism type of way and uh, well I guess I'll let you see me one one last time there's a couple pieces or I guess there's a piece back there up on the wall it's my Marine Corps emblem I've got a flag over here that I did the yellow uh, orange and red so I love this stuff and if you have any questions Send me a private message or an email. And I am Mike with Marshall CNC and Woodworking. I'm in Sullivan, Illinois, if you know where that's at. Uh, feel free to contact me and I will help as much as I can. So I appreciate it and good luck to everyone. Thank you.